Welcome to our monthly webinar. To this, this month, I'm excited to be here to talk to you about how Dodge, the iconic auto brand, drives organic social media marketing success. And this is something near and dear to my heart for two reasons. One is I believe in organic far more than paid. And number two, Dodge is one of Ignite Social Media's clients. So with that, I want to introduce our client and the lead on the Dodge brand, Mark Momstead. Mark, thanks for joining. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thank you for having me. So Mark is in charge of not only social media, but he's in charge of media, so the budget that Dodge spends on advertising. He's also in charge of CRM or customer relationship management for Dodge. So he's he's got a he's got a lot to do, and uh, it's interesting his perspective on um, earned versus paid and social because he's also the guy allocating the paid budget uh, for the brand generally. So we'll get into that. You can see a little few details here. Um, if you have any questions or you're tweeting generally about what you hear, the hashtag is organic social. Um, we will be asking, uh, doing a Q&A at the end of the call, so just the best way to ask a question is to tweet with that hashtag, organic social. We have a team monitoring that, and we'll be able to uh, go ahead and reply to those. We're also recording this show, um, so the video and the audio together will be emailed to everyone that registered at the end of it. So if you want to share it with somebody else, that will be made available to you within most Labor Day weekend. So probably no later than Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, it'll be sent to everyone. So let's talk first, Mark, about Dodge's overall social strategy and what you're, what you're trying to do um, and how you do it. And what I've got here is sort of the, um, the funnel that starts with awareness, goes down to consideration and intent, ends up with purchase, and then flips over into support, loyalty, and advocacy. And so talk a little bit about your primary objective, starting with awareness. Um, Jim, one of our, our primary uh, objectives, like most brands in the social space, is to create mass awareness, uh, make as big an impact as possible, and ultimately just increase our impression rates. Um, and with doing so, um, we hope to foster loyalty, um, Targeting a very niche group of fans and bringing them into our, our, our social circle, if you will, um, and ultimately creating advocates of these folks. Let them carry the torch for us. These are the folks that you know your friends and neighbors ask for advice on, on potentially a vehicle or, or a product. So again, mass awareness, driving them down, create some loyalty, and ultimately create some, uh, some brand ambassadors for us. Uh, ultimately, we'll help us sell some cars. We don't do a hard sell in this space, and again, it's uh, just fostering relationships. Yeah, and when I think about this relative to auto marketing generally, awareness, I mean, auto companies generally spend a lot of money on awareness advertising, so when you look to go into the market, the, the autos are all there. Loyalty CRM programs, there's been decades of those. Um, for uh, auto brands and, and uh, you know, social participation there. And then advocacy just adds another layer of taking the word of mouth, hey, which car should I buy, and sort of amplifying that. Absolutely. It's the, the old-fashioned word of mouth routine. So Dodge is, um, you know, nobody has an unlimited budget. I'm still looking for that client who just spends whatever they want. Uh, but the, and good luck know, with that. <laughs> thanks. The, the autos have a bigger paid advertising budget than, than most. But you've made a strategic decision to have minimal um, social advertising budget, even though you could, if you wanted to, uh, go the way other brands go. And, and to me, you see this chart with paid, earned, and owned on the screen, uh, which is loading, it looks like, for everybody about now. Uh, to me, it's out of whack. Paid is, is way too big. People buying fans that don't care about their product, promoting posts that aren't interesting giving Facebook $5.6 billion in revenue for ads with a 99.9% .9 failure rate. Uh, that just doesn't make sense to me. You've taken this approach on this slide where, where paid is, is much smaller. Why, why do you do that? Well, we've done, I, I think we've done a very good job um, targeting our customer base, bringing in a niche customer, um, and, and relying on them again to rely on their loyalty, using them as advocates to go up and spread the word for us, as opposed to trying to, like you said, buy out fans with a lot of media money. We, we've spent in our history uh, very, very little media dollars to support our social platforms. And we've been able to do that. Uh, like I said, I like to think that we, we know our customer base extremely well. We consistently provide them with relevant content. Uh, we, we, we run 
continual promotions, typically you know, one a quarter at least, uh, that's very engaging. Uh, so we, we rely primarily on owned and earned uh, as opposed to paid media uh, throughout our, our short history or tenure, if you will, in the social, in the social space. So let's spend a minute just sort of orienting everyone on your social presence because you're not just on Facebook, but certainly you've got a you've got a compelling following on Facebook. So right. first Dodge on Facebook, you've got about two million fans on the Dodge page. You've got another million uh, roughly on the Dodge Challenger page. So yeah. talk about your approach on on Facebook. How you have, do you have a page for every nameplate, or uh, or how do you approach this? Um, we do not have a, a page for every. And our, our philosophy is we wanted to keep everyone focused. We have one main Dodge page, which is, is our primary destination on Facebook. Uh, we also have a Challenger page, like you mentioned. And the reason we broke Challenger up from the other main page is it is a very niche product. It's, it's, it's a performance car. Uh, it has its own unique following. And we talk to those folks a little differently than we do on our, on our primary main page. But, um, we took the approach, unlike a lot of our, other uh, of our competitors, that we, we didn't go with a lot of nameplate pages. Um, I just don't feel it's necessary. I would keep, I'd prefer to keep everyone kind of channeled into, into one primary page or two, if you love it. Okay. And going on to Twitter, you've got about 125,000 uh, followers. What's the primary use Correct. of Twitter for you? Um, we use Twitter a lot to support them support all of our uh, other platforms uh, to create some dialogue with our, our followers. We'll, we'll um, um, potentially engage folks if we see comments uh, that we, we like or we want to expand on. But we use it primarily as a support tool to support all of our other uh, our platforms. Okay. And the Redline Dodge blog is very important to you. I saw the, uh, the guy who runs BuzzFeed saying that brands don't need blogs anymore, which I thought was um, interesting. His ar argument was that he can he can do um, 25 cat pictures and have it sponsored by Dodge, and and who would need a blog after after that genius? So um, you don't you don't feel that way. What what do you use the blog for? We use our blog. Um, here's the place where you can tell our where you tell our story in depth, if you will. Um, we provide a lot of varying content on our blog, uh, anything from, from product. To lifestyle type things, our latest marketing initiative. Um, we do a lot of historical content. This is the place where you can really truly tell your brand story. Uh, it's not your blog, and you really can't do that on any other uh, social platforms. So I, I totally disagree that you, you don't, you know, want to need a blog. Uh, I'm a big supporter of the blog. I think uh, we do a very good job with ours, and uh, we're very proud of it. And again, we just continually consistent, relevant content we keep out there uh, uh, regularly. Absolutely, and, and of course YouTube. I mean, every uh, yeah. every auto brand has to have YouTube commercials. Always do very well on YouTube, but right. it's also a great free hosting platform for lots of other video content. Absolutely. So uh, finish up with Google Plus and Instagram. You see, in Google Plus, you have almost three quarters of a million uh, followers. We're very active on Instagram, um, but so tell us, you know, these sort of niche networks. What do you what do you like them for? Uh, again, I, I see these as a support networks to uh, support our greater initiatives. Um, we, you know, we we've got some respectable numbers here, and we're um, growing very quickly in these um, in these particular platforms. But again, we use them to support initiatives. Again, um, like we do with Twitter, and we everything all things comes together as one big package, if you will, with Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, Instagram. Um, yeah, one of the one of the um, programs that we won't talk about today, but but is a good example here, is the Road Trip with Steve program, where Dodge Dart went around the country with an auto expert, and that that's ripe for Instagram photos. It's you know it's it's ripe for all sorts of um, uh, content. Absolutely. Um, we we put this gentleman in a Dodge Dart and sent him off across country on a series of road trips, and he captured. Uh, good automotive type content, and then just good general lifestyle content, things that he encountered along his road trip, and that's the perfect platform to post, and post a lot of this uh, content. Absolutely. Now, we're going to talk about two things uh, going forward. One is how you drive engagement with your content, and then we'll finish with some promotions and programs, and I think those have sort of gotten lost by a lot of marketers these days. Um, 
you know, when Facebook deprecated tabs, people would sort of, some people I've seen say, well, you know, Facebook promotions are so 2011, but um, I think we'll, we'll have some good examples of how Dodge has done it and why Dodge has done it and how it works. But let's start with content first. So branded content. Um, what's your sort of mix of content that you're looking for here? What we try to do on a rule of thumb for content is we do a good mix of, of product, uh, promoting our entire product line, and uh, what I consider you know, lifestyle. We, again, as I mentioned, we will play up our, our history a lot. Um, we'll promote some of our latest marketing initiatives. Uh, we, we use a lot of fan-generated content. So I think we do a very good job of providing a well-rounded mix of, of, of good product and lifestyle tech content. Again, we don't beat people over the head with all of our product Wi Fi's and things like that. That's not the intent here. Uh, again, we want to create awareness, build loyal, loyalty, and uh, create advocates here. So it's just a very good mix of content that we serve up to our uh, fans and followers. And the, the interesting thing to me is that this user generated content. Um, it pays dividends twice. Number one, the, the user obviously shares it to your wall, and that's an opportunity right. for them to be an advocate on their their timeline. But then when we put these um, albums together, like Mod Monday that's showing on this slide, they get tremendous likes, comments, and shares. Well, absolutely. And then this, by our fans seeing that we're using this user-generated com content, it, it encourages them to participate also. So. Yeah, it's just a win-win for both us, and the fans, and, and the, the followers that actually sent in the content to us. So it's been very successful for us. Yeah, I remember, I can't remember when it was, a year ago, two years ago, when the data came out showing that putting photo albums up uh, drives more engagement than putting up individual photos. That was a, a bit of a surprise to me, but um, particularly the way uh, Facebook has the news feed now where you can see more than one and sort of page through them quickly. Um, this kind of Mod Monday top five, is, it, it drives, you can see 14,000 likes, yeah. uh, 1,700 shares. It drives, it drives really good engagement. It sure does. And also trending hashtags. So when people are talking about, uh, you know, it, I think the negative way to say this is when brands try to hijack um, hashtags, um, and there's been some examples of brands doing that um, sort of crassly and getting um, sort of admonished on Twitter for that. But that's not what I'm seeing here. Right. Yeah, we, we typically don't like to uh, go off and hijack that you said hashtags. So um, we, we typically like to push out our own relevant, again, relevant content on our own as opposed to this more of hijacking. No. Yeah, if you look at the first example, five words I hate to hear was the trending hashtag and hello, license and registration, please. It fits the hashtag because no one yeah. likes to hear that, and it fits right. Dodge as right. a you know a, a speed brand. Right. But it also takes community management that's in the community and and you know noticing these trending hashtags and knowing the brand well enough. Right. Absolutely. So that's that's a quick sort of run through on this. Um, uh, content that you provide. And we went through this sort of quickly. We've got three promotions to share with people um, that Dodge has done recently uh, that I want to spend a little time explaining because I think, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about driving organic uh, engagement through photos or through Instagram videos or through any number of sort of news feed engagements. But these promotions, as I mentioned earlier, get a little bit less attention. So. What I'd like to do on each of these is talk about why you do it and then talk about um, each one a little bit, how it worked, and then we can end with, with some, of the, um, some of the results. But first, you know, why? Why do you, why do you do promotions? Why not just, you've got a three million fans, why not just feed them in the news feed? Again, it's all about providing a good mix of content uh, that, as I understand, is a resonates with our fan base. So. We, we try to run promotions on a fairly regular basis that just fosters, again, fan engagement. Um, in many cases, it's brought us a significant uh, spike in, in fans, again, almost equating to the same uh, as a media spend. So um, we try to run these uh, fairly regularly. And we, you know, again, I like to think that our promotions all have some substance to them. We're not just you know, doing the sweet safe, but we're giving a car away or something like that. Um, so we run this quite, quite frequently, and we've been very happy with the results. And again, I think the key is making sure the uh, promotion aligns with your fan base and something that resonates with them. Exactly. So let's let's start with um, inspired by you. So 
I'll set it up, and then you can take us through the, the, the solution. The challenge was the Dodge Dart, a new compact size vehicle, which was a new sort of product line for Dodge. You don't have a lot of, didn't have a lot of uh, Facebook, existing Facebook fans in the compact market because you didn't have that product line for a while. Um, and you have a vehicle introduced in January, but not for sale until July 4th. And you have a stylish compact vehicle, um, which sort of, uh, leverages that uh, attitude that Dodge is bringing, the sort of aggressive grill styling and the the, the lighting on the on the rear uh, uh, headlamps, the rear uh, lights. Uh, so, so how do you fill that time between January and July and introduce this vehicle to an audience that you don't have? So that's the challenge. So tell us about Inspired by You. <laughs> and it absolutely was a challenge um, because we didn't have any media in that time frame. Um, we didn't have any big events. Uh, we were kind of in between smaller shows, things like that. So we, we relied solely on social media. And what we did is we partnered with four very large um, social sites to create, again, awareness for the, the, the new 2013 uh, Dodge Star um, with an audience that can be very difficult to reach. We're targeting millennials here with this program. And most of the millennials had never heard of the Dodge Dart. Dodge Dart is a, a name that, that we resurrected from the, from the 60s and 70s. And I'm sure all the baby boomers remember the Dodge Dart. Um, but a lot of the millennials probably never heard of it. So again, we use these large platforms to go out and we held a contest on, on their sites, uh, again, with uh, their mass audience, again, to create awareness just so that the Dodge Dart name place. So when we do, when we were ready to launch, uh, we had some a little bit of awareness built up prior to our, our mass market media hitting the airwaves. Okay, so DeviantArt, first of all, DeviantArt is an art community. Yes. What was the program here? Uh, what we did with DeviantArt is, you know, again, we didn't have a whole lot of information to, to share with DeviantArt because the uh, the vehicle was 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 relatively new. We didn't have a lot of content out there, so it required them to. You know, we seeded them with some information as to what the Dodge Dart was. And what they had to do is create some artwork uh, based on their interpretation of the, the Dodge um, Dart. And we got back all kinds of interesting things. And it was just a phenomenal promotion. Um, again, it created a lot of awareness. There were a lot of people that spent numerous hours producing this art. Um, if I remember right, was one in particular. It was a wood carving. A gentleman had spent 25 hours producing the thing. Um, another, I uh, recall, is a, someone had spent their entire week's vacation creating a, an art piece that consisted of rolled up pieces of paper configured to uh, look like the, the Dodge Dart. So, um, very successful. We held a contest. We, the the DeviantArt fans voted, narrowed it down, and then we internally um, at Dodge we pick the uh, top six winners, um, and we, we've we've got the top six winners uh, framed up and hanging in our office at the headquarters. So uh, again, considered very successful, leveraging a large social platform. Again, targeting an audience we normally wouldn't reach, and again, out of hard stuff, but creating awareness for the past year. Right, we had four thousand pieces of artwork created. And you know we don't know the extent to which those artists shared the artwork with their networks. And then yes. we were able to measure, though, that people looking at the artwork spent 19,000 right. hours doing it, right. which is which is great for you know consideration of a new vehicle. Absolutely. And that's one thing I would say. We don't know the unknown was how they shared this up with their their uh, friends and family and uh, their social followers. So we're, we're unable to track that. Uh, I'm sure it was quite large. So, again, very happy with the results of DeviantArt. And we, and we get some great artwork out of it. And the other thing is we've got the uh, rights to use some of that, uh, which we've used in some of our marketing communications and events. And Transworld for skateboards and freeclothingshirt.co for t-shirts, two other communities we went into. Yes, in the concept uh, uh, of Transworld, they had to design a skateboard, a dark-inspired skateboard. Yeah, same thing, fans voted, we, we chose the winner, uh, we produced a number of them, um, and then we had given them away at a uh, concert uh, tour. And uh, same thing with freeclothing.com, it was a, a t-shirt 
they design a t-shirt with the uh, with the dark image on it. Um, again, very successful. Fans voted. We picked the two winners, and uh, we also have the rights to uh, put those in our merchandise lineup also. And the last one was uh, Reverb Nation, which is a, yes. a, a network a lot of people may not be familiar with. Um, Reverb Nation is another very large social network, very similar in size, I believe, to, to DeviantArt. Um, it's all aspiring musical artists. Uh, similar type concept, they had to write some lyrics based on the Dodge Dart. Uh, fans voted. Um, we narrowed it down to a, to a handful. Ned actually go up and create a complete full um, song. Um, and what we did when, after we chose the winner of the uh, Reverb Nation contest, we posted it on our YouTube channel and uh, put it to a video. Uh, so we almost created a music video and put it out on our channel. So, uh, again, creating awareness amongst a very large social network that, uh, again, we probably wouldn't have been able to reach through traditional channels. Yeah, we're looking at, you know, 500 artists participating, tapping their networks, mm -hmm. 90,000 votes, 35,000 people sharing that content. Uh, and this song by Michael Williams uh, was fantastic. It was a little yeah. Jimi Hendrix-like. It was really incredibly right. good. It was very good. So the final sort of results here, uh, 66 million uh, monthly unique users, 152,000 new fans, 12 million user-generated impressions. So this is sort of the, uh, the data we got from those networks as to the, to the reach they had. But you know, what I really like about this is uh, saying, you know, yeah, we have a Facebook page, but in this case, it's not the right place. Let's go to where this customer is. Let's go to the things that this customer already cares about, we know from our research, and let's play on their uh, playing field, uh, which I think is one of, the, one of the best parts of this program. Absolutely. So we talked a little bit earlier about um, about the blog and how important the, the blog is uh, from your perspective. So tell us a little bit about the Drive the Red Line Dodge promotion. Uh, what this promotion was is I was under the firm belief that one of our fans would love to become a guest blogger of ours. In fact, um, I was firmly believe that they'd be willing to do almost anything to uh, become a blogger of ours. Just, um, and make an appearance on our site and be recognized amongst their peers as a uh, as a, a Dodge uh, Redline Dodge blogger. So we ran a contest, and to my knowledge, I don't know if anyone else has done anything like this. Where we went out to our fan base, they had to submit an essay. Uh, we narrowed it down to a handful of candidates. Uh, we flew them into New York at the New York Auto Show last earlier this year, uh, and then they had to do a walk around presentation of a vehicle of their choice. And we filmed them, and then we chose a winner um, based on that. So uh, the gentleman who won the contest is uh, excellent. Uh, we love his writing style. He, he couldn't be happier. We had him in town last weekend for uh, an event that we did, and he's just tickled to be part of this. Um, and he, it's, it's an honor for him. He's, he's a true blue car guy. He's, a, he's an illustrator. There's a lot of cartoon-type things with uh, cars. He has a lot of design work. He's done some work, I believe, some of the uh, some movie sets and things like that. So he couldn't be happy to be part of this. We couldn't be happy with the results we achieved because we had mass reach with this. We had particip participation rate was phenomenal. And I think what we also did here is we got ourselves potentially a long-term blogger. Uh, but he could be a regular blogger um, going forward long-term on redlinedash.com for us. Yeah, that's a nice part about both of these. I mean. Lots of people are doing contests, you know, the, the sort of formulaic one is win an iPad when your business has nothing to do with an iPad. Um, right. But what you've described on both of these are very much themed around the brand. And, you know, this one was a little uh, smaller in reach than the first one, but it was highly targeted to your core audience base. And not only do you have the, the value of the promotion, but then you get all this content that uh, the, the writer is writing uh, for the next several months. Absolutely. So we'll, the last, the third, I want to stop and answer a quick question that somebody from the audience has asked because it's sort of important for this, uh, to frame this conversation. And the question was, can you describe earned and owned? So um, paid obviously is understood. It's what you buy from Twitter or Facebook, you know, placing ads. Earned means you're, you're earning these impressions with people taking organic actions, whether they're seeing your content in the news feed or they're seeing their friends react to it or they're seeing their friends talk about it. Owned means the, the website, the blog, the properties that you own and run. And so 
the balance between um, what do you use for paid, uh, how do you get people to uh, see this organic reach, and then how and when do you drive them to these own properties to sort of close the sale is what we were talking about with the balance between paid, earned, and owned. So hopefully that's helpful to uh, everybody. Let's end with my one of my all-time favorite programs we've ever done in our six years, um, Defiance, Dodge Defiance, Arc Falls Sweepstakes. Now again, contest, which doesn't sound like a shocking new endeavor, but this was a very different one. So set it up for us. What, what's the Dodge Defiance Sweepstakes? Um, this absolutely was different, and you know, it does require a little setup. Um, we partnered with the Sci-Fi Network on the hit drama series Defiance. Um, Defiance takes place approximately 40 years in the future. Um, we consider this one of our pillar media properties for 2013. And with any um, pillar property, we, we try to wrap a 360 campaign around it. So there's, full, there's product integration, um, there's a digital element, there's a experiential events, there's a lot of PR, there's newsletters, uh, there's, there's a mobile site. Um, we, we had two cars. In the uh, in the show, with two Charger police cars, they had a Mad Max type look and feel to them um, that were part of the law enforcement team in defiance. Uh, and then there was a gaming element. In fact, this is the first time, uh, first convergence ever of television and online gaming. That's why we jumped on board with this. Again, a difficult audience to reach. It's a, a younger audience, millennial based, um, and it's a little heavy mail, which is fine, and it is, as our Dodge brand does. So um, it was a first ever property again where online gaming and television actually interact with each other. So we thought, what better opportunity to jump on board with partner with sci-fi on this. Um, and again, like any, any other good pillar program, we, we wrap a full campaign. So we got with Big 19 and we developed this game, this Arc Falls game. And what an Arc Fall is, it literally falls off the, the spaceship. Uh, it's wreckage from the, the spaceship that uh, explodes and falls to planet Earth, uh, and these fragments contain rare and valuable technology. So whenever on the show an arc fall um, would, would drop from one of these ships, um, we sent an email out to our, to our fan base letting them know, who, I, I guess in the back up maybe a bit, we want to know a couple weeks in advance promoting this and recruiting registrants. So we had a, uh, a number of players. And, um, so once an, an arc fall actually landed, we sent an email out and we posted on our social platforms um, communicating to everybody to go now and look for a clue. We have an art fall that we placed on our Dodge.com site on Redline Dodge, and we also uh, put a couple of them up on SciFi's uh, .com page. So it's a way to take our fans from the show, our social followers, and drive them to our .com site and to our blog. Um, they had to answer a series of product questions once they uh, unlock these arc falls, and then they're put into a sweepstakes with the ultimate prize uh, being a, a trip to Comic Con uh, this past uh, July. So, um, again, very successful. Her great example of leveraging a media property um, and taking it to our social platforms and using social to, to further enhance the program. Uh, and again, it's 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 a different type of a sweepstakes when we're kind of just dropping names into a hat and we draw on if somebody wins an iPad or a car. And we have a lot of fun with it. Um, our fans love it. It's a huge spike um, in, in new fan acquisition uh, as a result of this campaign. Yeah, in fact, I'm pulling up the slide now on, uh, on the results, and you can see here uh, almost a quarter of a million new fans. Uh, from this promotion and uh, 270 million brand impressions. A lot of that came from the fact that we used um, open graph um, technology to generate impressions. So when you uh, right. back up a slide, when Kristen found an arc fall, it, it generated that uh, to her news feed um, automatically uh, once she had accepted the permissions. And so that drove an awful lot of participation, a lot, awful lot of impressions. Um, but my favorite statistic on this is the last one, which is the 52% um, opt-in rate. And so, Absolutely. you know, there's good product placement on a show and there's good sort of product integration and social and, and a good one is when the people care and it's not just a gratuitous, you know, product suddenly shows up and it doesn't seem to make sense. And in this one we were appealing to 
a group of people who or over half of them said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play, and yeah, I am interested in Dodge vehicles, the Challenger, the Charger, and please do email me um, about these vehicles. And that's a, a sort of stunningly high rate. So not only do you get new fans, you get new members of your CRM database to message uh, that way as well. You know, vlog traffic's up because arc falls are hidden on them. There's so many good things happening with this sort of promotion that you wouldn't get if you were just in the, you know, relying on content in the news feed. Correct. So, and we're going to be happier again with results. And uh, to your point, that 52% out bin rate is phenomenal. That's actually quite unheard of to see an out bin rate uh, that high in a program. Um, so, couldn't be happier. Um, very, very pleased with the team for bringing this thing forward. Um, and uh, just so, again, another great program that we so what would be your advice to sort of bring us home on this uh, wrap-up slide here for you, for the summary? I, I think I did put it in a nutshell. I, I often say that the, the, the key is providing consistent, relevant content that resonates with your fan base and your followers, and then mixing in, uh, in a, a program or a uh, promotion like we have done here with, with the Defiance Art Falls or the Drive to Redline Dodge or the TV art, things like that. So we're continually feeding good content. We like to think that we know our fan base extremely well. Uh, the content resonates with them. It's a good mix of product and lifestyle, historical, and then we throw these promotions in occasionally, and we just have a uh, recipe for success. Um, so if, that, if I could give any advice to anybody, I, I, I think that's uh, just you know your customer. You have to know your customer base. And you just serve them content and promotions that they want to participate in. We, we don't try to jam anything down anyone's throat here. So. so fantastic. We've gotten a lot of questions. If you want to ask yours, use the hashtag organic social. Um, Mark, I want to ask you uh, one that came in from Twitter um, uh, that's sort of interesting. Is it more difficult to be brand stewards in social than in other types of marketing? I assume that's in context to controlling the brand, if you will. Is it more difficult? That's yeah. question. Um, the question. Not, not at all. Not at all. In fact, I think it's, it's actually easier to uh, control our brand image, look and feel in the social space. Um, How so? Um, we, we're in control of the content that we're, we're driving and, and the messaging. So um, we can help guide the opinions of our, of our, our advocates and followers. So I, I actually think it's much easier in the social space. Well, you also you'll get the stray, you know, hater. Every brand has their haters. Oh, and, uh, absolutely. But if you've got you know millions of people who uh, who don't hate you, in fact, love the products, they they get drowned out pretty quickly. So. Well, that's what I love about social too. To your point, occasionally you'll get somebody that have a negative comment, and our fans will often just jump all over them and almost beat them up uh, to the point where I wish I think they wish they probably had the same thing. So. <laughs> So the number one, of course, question that everyone says is, have car sales risen because of social media? Uh, I don't know if I can contribute a spike in sales solely to social media. Our sales overall are up uh, uh, a lot this year. We're doing extremely well in social. It's absolutely been an integral part of our, uh, our sales success this past year. It's tricky. It's, it's really, um, you know, there's a lot of research on um, social driving sales, uh, measurably driving sales for a brand like Starbucks. And the difference between Starbucks, well, there are a lot of differences between Starbucks and Dodge, but among them is uh, purchase frequency. Um, so you can see if somebody bought, you can track for four weeks and see if somebody bought uh, more coffee for those four weeks following exposure. Um, right. with, you know, the, with the product cycle, people will keep cars, you know, five, ten years. Really hard to, to say, um, you know, they saw this update and therefore they bought a car. Um, right. So but we do surround the value question a lot of different ways. We have a several different models we use um, with Dodge to say uh, one is would this cost us more if we bought it or less if we, if, uh, uh, if we bought it. And it generally costs more and it's, uh, it would have cost more and it's less effective when you buy it. So another question, and I can, I can take this one, is what software does the Dodge social team use to create, publish, and measure content day to day? Um, so generally speaking, we use a company called Expion for, for um, Dodge, and Expion allows us to um, publish the content to 
um, to measure it, uh, to compare our success rate against uh, competitors that we choose all very, very quickly. Um, so it's a really nice um, piece of software for that. It has, it can do everything that native Facebook can do, and it can actually do some things that native Facebook cannot do. For example, we may want to link to an article and have the, the image be one that's not in the article. We can do that. Or we can make the image be a video, even though it's not in the article. So there's some things we can do with, uh, with XBeyond that we can't do uh, elsewhere. And it also pulls in all the responses um, and sort of stack ranks our content against our competitors um, very, very nicely. So um, that's, a, that's a, a good piece of software. There are many out there. Um, and then so the one big question that people ask, I think we've touched on it a little bit more, but go into this as a sort of a summary again. Why do promotions at all? Why are we trying to initiate fan engagement? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's one of the objectives is uh, fan engagement. engagement. But uh, again, we, we're trying to just have consistent, relative, fresh content, whether it's just a, a typical day-to-day -day post or, a, or a, a new promotion of some type. We, we try to give our fans and followers a reason to, con to continue to come back and to share our uh, platforms with, with their uh, fans and followers. So um, I'm a firm believer in, in running promotions, again, very targeted promotions. I'm not a fan of just giving away iPads or uh, giving away cars, things like that. Uh, I always say we need to do a promotion or sweet taste that has substance to it. Um, so I'm a big believer in doing them, and we do them quite frequently, I think we've been quite successful at it. So you were around when uh, when Dodge made the decision to get into social, and there's a question of what sort of handheld holding needed to take place to convince a, a once traditional company to get into social. Uh, yeah, we were, I don't want to say we were slow to come on board, but um, yeah, we we were, uh, and I hate to say too, we were a bit old school traditional, but it, it took a little while for us to come on board, and, uh, and we knew we had to do it, and, uh, and we did, and we've made great strides. I, I feel we're still new to the space, uh, as, I guess, as everybody is, but um, we've jumped in. Uh, we, I think we've done quite well, uh, not only with Dodge, but across uh, our sister brands. So um, it's some place we knew we had to be, and, and somewhere we wanted to go, and uh, so far it's been a, it's been a great ride. One of the other questions is around can and when, when can and how can the social media team integrate use of your product in line in TV shows? I mean, that, the example here is when uh, Walt on Breaking Bad and Walt Jr. both drive Dodge products. I think uh, I think Skyler's even got a Grand Caravan, so I think they're they're using uh, Dodge products in that extremely popular show right now that I'm desperately awaiting the last three episodes of, but. What are what are the constraints or opportunities around the sort of product placement you do on TV? You know, it all depends on on the partner we align ourselves with. Um, what, again, like Defiance, uh, there's a there's a product placement. Again, we have two chargers in there, um, and we've done it with a number of other programs and movies. Um, most recently, too, uh, earlier this year with the Fast and Furious Six, we had product placement uh, within that movie. So. And all depending on who we've aligned ourselves with, we try to wrap a social plan with every paid product integration and placement that we do. Again, like we do with Defiance, we do the same thing. You know, we had already talked about earlier about the movie uh, Fast and Furious 6. So um, we try to wrap a social promotion into every every type of uh, paid product or media placement that we, uh, we do. I have a tough question for you that someone's asked. Do you believe social will surpass paid, in parentheses, traditional media in the not too distant future? Um, it's a very interesting question. I, I don't. I don't believe so. It's, social will continue to grow and become larger. Um, still, the core medium is is old-fashioned broadcast. Still, our, our biggest uh, our biggest media property. So um, I don't I don't know they'll ever capture the past, but I, I do see, foresee it growing much uh, larger and more influential uh, over the next couple of years. I, I I tend to agree with you, even though I do social for a living. I mean, right. it, it plays a different role. I mean, what we're doing here in social is trying to get 
the dodge and the consideration set. And what you're doing at advertising, you know, is trying to close the sale. Come in now, 3.9% financing, or, you know, uh, right now is the, the clearance sale. Um, you know, you're trying to, to drive, you know, sales. And uh, we're, I think, a little, generally speaking, a little higher up in the funnel, and then and then trying to take those purchasers and, and put them into a sort of virtuous cycle with their friends. So um, it, it's a different role. And, and, you know, paid, even paid social, which I'm not much of a fan of, has its role. It's, I'm not a fan of when people buy uh, big numbers of, uh, of, of likes on their page because I've seen for clients, and I'll give you one client example, it's not Dodge, um, but they, they uh, did a fan acquisition buy um, because their bosses wanted more fans. And that's not uncommon, and we advised against it. Um, but they did a buy, and they got a lot more fans. We saw the interaction rate, um, which is uh, likes, comments, and shares divided by fan base, we saw the interaction rate uh, decline 66%. And so, you know, when you buy these fans over and over and over again, they do not engage at the same rate as organic fans. They're not only, uh, they're not just a neutral on the page, they are a net negative on the page. They are hurting your edge rank, they are hurting your ability to reach your true fans. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really not a fan of that, but boosting some good content, uh, helping a promotion get started with some advertising. There are good reasons to use advertising, but acquiring millions of fans through a buy, not a good long-term strategy in my view. I couldn't agree with you more, Jim. So Mark, a question came through. Would Mark recommend small businesses to focus on relevant content to drive engagement? I, yes, I believe so. I, I think that that model kind of works regardless of the size of your business. So is you've got to target the right folks, and again, it goes back to knowing who your audience or who, you, who, who it is you're looking to target, knowing your audience, knowing your customer, knowing your fan base. Um, so yes, I absolutely think it makes sense for, regardless of the size of your business, whether you're a major corporation or, or a new startup. So related to that last question is very much related to that. How do you find the right content mix balance between not being too product focused, but having enough product focus so you drive some results. I think that's something you just have to kind of feel out as, as you go. Um, you know, we monitor our engagement levels, you know, as you mentioned, daily. Um, I think it's something you kind of learn and you, you monitor as you go. I mean, you, you, and you experiment a little, as, as we have over the last couple of years, um, where we feel we've gotten to right now where we have a very good uh, a mix. So I, I think it's it's just kind of a wanted to go a little bit. I don't know if you agree with that, Matt, but I do. And I mean we manage pages literally dozens and dozens of brands and right. um we're never done. When we do a strategy, we always say this is our initial strategy because we need to right. see how the brand, how the, sorry, how the customer, how the fan, how the prospect reacts to that content. And we right. have to adjust all the time. And the, one of the beauties of uh, social is, you know, is, is you, you can respond to react so, so quickly. So a lot of it is you know, some trial and error until you get that comfort point or comfort level, your sweet spot, if you will. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to wrap it up there. I want to thank you all for attending. Mark Momstead with Dodge, thank you so much for being our guest. You're welcome. And thank you for having me. It was, it's been fun. So what we'll do for the rest of you, we will send you the uh, link to this recording if you want to share it with anyone um, and convince them to reallocate your budget from those silly fan acquisition buys into some meaningful content and uh, fan ag engagement. You've got a blueprint shared by Mark. Um, and we will have a future webinar coming to you shortly. So thanks so much for joining. We will be in touch.